What about arc length? We know from section 8.2 how to find the arc length along a parametric curve. It's the integral of the speed. But now we're doing it for angles, where the angle is the parameter. Should I call it the speed? Well, only if the angle were actually the same as time. But it's still the same kind of formula. It's still the integral of square root of the derivative of x with respect to the parameter squared plus the derivative of y with respect to the parameter squared. The parameter is theta. So I'd write dx d theta squared plus dy d theta squared integral with respect to theta over whatever interval that theta is varying over. If we wanted the entire length of the entire limicon, we'd have to let theta go from zero to two pi. Theta is an angle, so maybe I should let it not vary between A and B, but between two Greek letters. How about the Greek versions of A and B, alpha and beta? Theta is varying between those two angles. A generic picture might look like this. Say this is alpha here, and this is beta there. Theta is varying between those two values, giving you a polar curve. R is varying, maybe you get something like this. We're after the arc length of that curve using the parametric equations form. It's the same formula as in section 8.2, the pre previous section. Can this be simplified though? I It actually can, but it's a bit painful. I'm going to do it, okay? I'm, I'm putting myself through this pain. What are dx, dt, and dy, dt? We've already figured them out. They're these things. I have to square those things and add the results. Yikes. I'll, I'll do it using the shorthand notation. This is going to be where this shorthand notation is most useful. Dx, d theta is the bottom thing. Negative r sine theta plus r prime cos theta. That is dx, d theta. Dy, d theta was r cos theta plus r prime sine theta. That's dy, d theta. That's got to get squared as well. Let's simplify it. It does simplify quite a bit, actually. Co squared theta plus sine squared theta always equals one is going to come in real handy here. Expand it out. Make your square root even longer here. I'm going to foil because I'm squaring binomials. Negative r sine theta squared is positive r squared sine squared theta. That's first times first there. Outside it times outside and inside times inside gives you in both cases the product of these two things. So we have two of those. So we get a minus two r r prime sine theta cos theta. And then last times last is going to be careful r prime squared cos squared theta. And then continuing FOIL this part. First times first is R cos theta times itself is R squared cos squared theta. I'm looking right there. Outside and inside products are the same thing. So I get two of them plus two R R prime sine theta cos theta. Oh, isn't that nice? These two things will cancel. So nice. Not done yet. Last times last there is plus r prime squared sine squared theta d theta, just barely enough paper. 
Yeah, we got some cancellation. We can also group together some terms, terms that involve R squared are these two. They get grouped together. Terms that involve R prime squared are these two. They get grouped together. Factor out an R squared out of those two terms, they're sum. And factor an R prime squared out of those two terms with their sum. Use the fact that cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals one. And in the end, it simplifies very nicely to the square root of R squared plus R prime squared. D theta, it probably would be best to go back to F of theta notation now. R is F of theta. So I get square root of F of theta squared plus R prime is F prime of theta squared. F prime of theta, that gets squared as well. D theta. Is this a difficult integral to do for our example? Uh, it is actually. What is f of theta plus f, uh, f of theta squared plus f prime of theta squared for our example? f of theta is two plus four cos theta. That gets squared. f prime is negative four sine theta. That gets squared. Foil this one out gives me four plus uh, 16 cos theta plus 16 cos squared theta. For, uh, multiply that one times itself, I get plus 16 sine squared theta. These combine to give a 16. 16 plus four is 20. So I get 20 plus 16 cos theta, which is easy to integrate, but I'm taking a square root of it. So it's not so easy to integrate. The arc length that we're after, the arc length, for example, for the example, for an arbitrary alpha and beta would be integrate alpha to beta square root of 20 plus 16 cos theta, which is not an easy integral to do. You might even call it impossible in some sense, in other senses, you could call it possible. What do I mean? If you did <clears throat> a pure antiderivative problem, integrate square root of 20 plus 16 cos theta d theta. I keep making that mistake today. Sorry. d theta. What happens? Special functions happen. Elliptic E, something new. What have we had so far? We've had, we've had Earth. Uh, we've had Fresnel C and Fresnel S. Uh, the gamma function, I think I've mentioned. Here's a new one, an, an elliptic function, elliptic E. Are elliptic functions related to ellipses? I believe so. Yes, they are related to ellipses. This is an honest to goodness function. You could even plot it as an ordinary plot or, you know, or a polar plot for that matter, if you wanted to. There, here's what it looks like as an ordinary plot. As a polar plot, because R continues to increase, it would do some sort of spiraling. That's kind of fun to realize. As a polar plot, it does some spiraling like that. R keeps getting bigger as theta keeps going around. It doesn't come back to itself. I could let theta continue and we get more spirals. Fun, fun, fun. I mean, there are simpler versions of spirals as well. Even just R equals theta is a spiral with a polar plot. If R equals theta, then R keeps increasing as theta increases. So it is an honest to goodness function, but that doesn't seem very helpful. If we wanted to find the arc length around the entire Limacon, for our example, we'd have to go from zero to two pi. What would I guess the answer would be? 
You know, if I approximated this thing with a circle centered right around there, three zero or so, or radius three, what, the circumference? Okay, yeah, circle, radius three, circumference would be two times, two pi times the radius, six pi or so, six pi, oops, six pi is about 18.8. Okay, we also have the loop-to-loop -loop in there. So I'm guessing somewhere around 20. There, here is an exact form that's approximately, well, bigger than that, 26.7. Okay, so I wasn't taking into account how long the loop really was, evidently. So that's our collection.